Have the Jewish settlers in the West Bank gone too far? Why has acting Prime Minister Ehud Olmert declared war on the settlers? These are less moral questions, although they do deal with the kind of moral concerns which have taxed those Israelis who have long worried about the effect on their society of the prolonged occupation of Palestinian areas. But more than moral questions, these are nitty-gritty political questions, which revolve around this. After more than three decades of the settler tail wagging the State of Israel dog, have the settlers indeed finally gone too far, so far that the Israeli public turns tail on them and their purpose, namely to retain the whole of the biblical land of Israel for Jews. What prompts the thought is not so much that the settlers are being condemned by left-wing liberals or even that the government is now criticizing them, but that they are under fire from ordinary fellow Israelis, people in whose hearts they thought they had settled, the kind of Israelis indeed who, though they did not line up with the settler ideology, never cast them as outcasts, never reacted forcefully to their transgressions as they established illegal outposts or trampled Palestinian rights. But now these same middle ground Israelis are, at least, seriously questioning the direction in which the settlers have long been trying to direct Israel. Last summer the settlers failed to stop Ariel Sharon carrying out a veritable revolution when he dismantled the settlements in Gaza and withdrew Israel from 38 years of occupation there. But now they're trying to hit back. With Sharon cut down by illness and exploiting a presumed weakness of power, the settlers have tried to regain the initiative with a string of rebellious actions in order to, in their words, wash away Sharon's sins in Gaza. They've been laying down their marker that the next Israeli government should not dare to try to give up more land unilaterally, this time in the West Bank. But by forcing the issue, by trying to preempt new withdrawals, the settlers have provoked a new questioning among Israelis about their own future. And curiously, the biggest question marks have been aroused not by brick and mortar, not by any new settlements or any new roads carved out in the West Bank. It is the future of Palestinian olive orchards that has become a major preoccupation. Night after night over recent weeks, Israeli televisions have been showing dismembered Palestinian olive trees. Viewers have been aghast to discover that for the past three years, settlers have hacked down no fewer than 2,400 West Bank trees, mostly belonging to impoverished Palestinian peasants. The army and police made little inroads in halting the horticultural carnage, and precious few settlers have been detained, though they often acted in full public glare. Now, however, ministers in the transitional government are directing the Israeli army to stop turning an apologetic eye. The tree hackers will be halted, is the sudden promise of acting Premier Olmert, while military chief of staff General Dan Khalut says Israel is paying the penalty of years of leniency towards the settlers. Rebuffing hollow claims by the settler leadership that tree pruning has been the action of Palestinians themselves or very occasionally of a few errant weeds within our own community, Olmert, backed up by his defense minister, Shaul Mofaz, vowed zero tolerance towards settler vandalism. The public and media outcry is also very different from previous indifference. Nor is the public impatience with the settlers restricted to customary left-wingers, whistleblowing about violation of Palestinian rights. No, many of the volunteers who have gone out into the West Bank to protect Palestinian orchards and to plant new trees are from the Israeli consensus, the very kind of people who only a few months ago identified wholly with the pain of the settlers and volunteered to help them when they were compelled to vacate their Gaza homes. Why then the adverse reaction now? Possibly because trees are such an acute symbol for Israelis, but it seems something more political, less tangible than that. Just like the settler community, many mainstream Israelis instinctively understand that Ariel Sharon had positioned their nation at a new crossroads, a critical crossroads with a critical question to be answered. That question is this. Is Israel going to continue to meander down a creeping annexationist road, down which it has gone for the past 30 years, during which large parts of the West Bank were gradually incorporated into Israel? Or should Israel be preparing for the final fixing of its permanent borders? Before he was struck down by illness, the fixing of permanent borders was Ariel Sharon's promise for the upcoming elections. 
permanent borders are something which Israelis have never had in their 58-year history. It's something after which they hanker. And that dovetails now with the question of who should determine those new borders, the settlers or the great mass of Israeli voters who will be electing their new government at the end of March. The olive branch is, of course, a universal peace symbol. But in the absence of firm peace moves with the Palestinians, the battle to stop the settlers in their actions against the Palestinian orchards can be seen as a more immediate and a more potent symbol. It involves a scramble for which West Bank land should be included within Israel's desired permanent borders. In this context, some will certainly see the government's determination to square off against the settlers as coming not a moment, not a severed olive branch, too soon.